Hey folks, this is Pete, and I'm going to be showing you how to play this game called Code Game, which is a tribute to the game Code Names, which is a great party game. This is my, uh, I took that, uh, the similar game style and, and added my own word list, uh, my own rules, and made a lot of stuff that you can change and edit, uh, so it makes it its own thing. And it's something that you can play in your, uh, on your conference services, so such as Zoom or Hangouts, uh, while you're stuck at home. So let's talk about how to play the game first. This is a two team game. There's the red team and the blue team. And on the teams, you need one captain. And that captain on the red team and that captain on the blue team are going to have information that the other players do not have. In fact, the information that they have is where their hidden agents are. So there are these spies that are hidden on this five by five grid of words. And those spies, uh, are there are uh, eight spies for the blue team and nine spies for the red team right now and so um, and they're hidden somewhere on this board and my job as a team captain is to get my team to guess where all of our spies are before the other team guesses where all of their spies are so uh, it's a pretty easy concept to get you just say uh, okay it's on round one blue team's turn the blue team captain is going to give a clue and the blue team is going to make their guesses one at a time. So here is how that works, which is that the captain has to make their clue fit this form, which is they're allowed to say one, one word clue and then a number. And that's it. They can't do any table talk. They can't confirm or answer any questions. They can only say one word that is not on the board, and then a number. And that's how their clue has to work. It can't be hyphenated, it has to be just like a single word, not a phrase, okay? So if I'm on the blue team, I'm gonna, uh, and I'm the captain, I'm gonna hit reveal hidden cards here. I could see where all of the blue agents are hiding, which is their payment, tip, silver, activity, shame, advertising, mother, and after. And so I want my team to be able to guess where all of those are. So I don't really want to give a clue that's like a one word clue or a, a one word clue followed by uh, the number one because that's um, that doesn't put me ahead of the other team. Unfortunately, what happens is that if the other team says one word and then three and then they're able to get three of their agents that way, um, then they're going to be way out ahead of us. So you have to be a little clever with your clues. So looking at this again, I would say money two as a team captain and so now my team has to make their guesses and they're probably going to look through all of these words not knowing where the hidden agents are and their first guess is going to probably be payment payment is right up here and so as the person who's running the game i can click through and say and mark that as a blue space okay and then um and then that team has the option of having a second guess because um, after they make the guess, then the uh, captain will verify if that guess was correct. That was a correct guess. We're going to change that to blue, and we're going to leave that in blue. Now it's on, uh, on blue on the board. And so we know that we have one less agent to find for the blue team. Now, remember, the clue had the number two after it, which means that there's another agent under there that has to do with money. So the blue team could choose to guess again, or they can choose to pass. Now, why would you choose to pass? I mean, first of all, it's pretty money could be tip or it could be silver. In fact, now that I'm thinking about this, uh, I could have said money three, <laughs> whoops, uh, because silver could be money two uh, as well. So uh, money three would even be a better clue. Um, but why would they choose to pass? Well, they choose to pass because if my team guessed incorrectly, they could accidentally reveal some uh, an agent from the other team helping them out and helping them achieve their final goal or my team can and here i'll reveal the the thing the agents for you or you can hit uh the assassin so um there is one assassin in play by default and the assassin shows up as gray and so if a team is really unsure uh, of a guess they may want to hold back that guess just because hitting the assassin 
uh, means game over immediately and that your team has lost. So if the blue team guessed SAP for some reason, maybe they thought it was like SAP, uh, which has to do with the, the SAP, isn't that a market term? Um, that they may guess that because it has to do with money and then they would not only be wrong, but they would lose the game immediately. Uh, these yellow boxes are all for uh, bystanders and the bystanders, they don't count for anything. But if your team guesses a bystander, then uh, they don't get to make another guess after that. So the only time where you can make more than one guess is if you guess correctly and then you're given the option to guess again if you want to. Um, if you guess incorrectly and you get reveal a red player a red agent uh, then that stays on the board if you reveal a bystander that also stays on the board but like i said if you reveal the assassin then the game is immediately over and uh and that's it that's the game it's really fun it's really uh pretty easy uh and it's great for large groups because the people who actually have to do the most hard thinking are the captains and then the other the teams they can kind of talk to each other and it's not like you can play with a pretty big group and not everyone has to always participate, which is kind of the fun part. So I could say, you know, money three as my, my guess, and then one person or two people could really think it out while the other folks are kind of there watching and thinking um, and maybe focusing on, on all the other cards. So, um, so it's a lot of fun. Now, how do we do this as a stream? Well, as you can see, I, I wrote the instructions down here um, and I gave you all of these extra options. Now, you don't need to know any of these extra options. These are all unnecessary new game options. These are all just um, if you want to play or modify the game. Like, for instance, <coughs> uh, I have a couple languages here. There's Dutch uh, and English because someone uh, did a really nice translation on my behalf. And I can add more languages. In fact, I have uh, other word sets I would like to integrate, like uh, movies and uh, TV shows and animals and things like that. But for now, you can actually just add your own custom word list, which you can check this box. And you can get rid of everything. This is the current word list and do a CSV, um, a comma separated, uh, comma and space separated uh, file right there. You just paste all that information in and then hit update options and it will give you that new word list. So. Um, what you need to know uh, about running it is, first of all, you load the page and uh, you'll get this number here. This game ID is just uh, a way for me to randomize it, but for you to have uh, the ability of, of referencing what game ID you're playing. So uh, this is 748, it says it right here, right under the board. And so um, what you would do is uh, one person loads this up and then they share their desktop. Now the person who shares their desktop, uh, they are just in charge of clicking through all of the different, uh, and you just click through all of the different states of the cards. It's very simple, very easy. It also works, you know, on an iPhone or an iPad or something like that. But um, that person who's sharing their screen should never hit reveal hidden cards. Reveal hidden cards is what they would do at the end of the game because now everyone can see this screen. This is like our, our main game board. Now, the two captains, they load up the same game and the same game ID number, and they can load it up on their phone. If they have an iPhone or a, an Android phone, they load it up in their web browser on their phone with this game ID, or they load it up on their own uh, personal web browser separately in a separate window, just so they can see where all those hidden cards are. They're allowed to hit the expose hidden cards button. In fact, they can leave it up in front of them uh, if they're on a shared, like on a hangout, uh, as long as they're not sharing their screen, they could see all this hidden information that no one else knows. And then the game goes on like that. It's actually uh, really simple, as long as people don't, you know, decide to go and cheat. Certainly, it is cheatable. Uh, you could just have someone who goes to this site and just hits reveal cards, but where's the fun in that? It's like going to pub trivia and uh, Googling all of the answers as they come in. That's not fun. Uh, it's not fun for anyone. Why play a game if you're going to cheat like that? Um, it's a party game. It's supposed to be fun. Anyway, um, that is how you play. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you have some ideas on how to make it better. Uh, I am not going to add back end to this. This is a security thing. It's just a hobby for me. I'm not gonna add like uh, rooms and things like that to automate some of the stuff that I'm making you do manually, which is like this uh, game ID number. And I'm not gonna make it so that there's a cheat prevention mechanism 
Um, but uh, the last thing just to know uh, is that if you have new game options, so say like, let's say that we want the grid height to be seven and we hit the update options, we're leaving it at 748, then anyone who is also playing, obviously who, who needs to look at this um, on their own, so those captains, they need to change the same game options and make sure that they match on their end. Uh, so if you have like, you know, a seven height uh, and we're going to have three assassins and the first team is going to have 10 spies, and the second team will have uh, 11 spies. Uh, then I hit update options, and then you can see, there we go, we have our three assassins, and we have a lot more information there. So, that is it. This is called The Code Game. It's at the completely surrounded.com, French slash games, French slash code. My name is Pete. Thank you for joining me uh, on this adventure, and stay healthy and stay safe.